Well, I'm over here now at the WFSA uh, stand, and we're talking about safety, and I'm joined by uh, Alan Murray. Alan, welcome. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to uh, talk to us. Oh, no, it's a pleasure, and this whole subject is one I'm pretty passionate about. Absolutely. Now, this, the standards were, uh, were, were passed through at the, uh, yesterday's uh, uh, assembly meeting. Tell us a little bit about where the standards have come from and what the developments have been to get them to where they are today. The standards go back to a group that uh, self-started uh, and generated them and then had them approved at the World Congress in, 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 the, in the Hague, uh, you know, quite a long time ago now. And then um, a group that I was involved with and I guess led uh, revised them and they were ratified in Cape Town, which would be eight years ago. And at that time, uh, the, perhaps the most controversial thing was the fact that we, in effect, mandated pulse oximetry as essential for safe anesthesia, with the only exception being to save life or limb. Uh, I think the standards represent uh, most high-income parts of the world have their own standards. And our standards actually align to them because they're, they're graded according to your resources. But many parts of the world that are resource limited don't actually have standards. And these international ones provide a powerful guide but also a tool for advocacy for improving the standard of care everywhere. We're also here today to talk about the, the SAFE the campaign, the SAFE Tea campaign. Tell us a little bit about the campaign and, and, and how that links in with those standards. Well, what we're trying to do is develop a worldwide network, both of organisations, but also, and in my mind, even more excitingly, of individual anesthesiologists. I mean, my vision, if you like, is that we would have every anesthesiologist in the world actually joined up with us. And it would be a two-way thing where we would be able to send out information and news and uh, the latest information about safety, but also where we would know who was actually working in different places. We would have a database that would be fantastically useful in guiding political moves to try and improve standards around the world. That's a, that's a great vision. <laughs> what do you want people to do at this particular Congress? Come to the WFSA stand, get your photo taken with safety and sign up to the safety campaign. Absolutely. Thanks ever so much indeed for your time today and uh, good luck with the campaign. Thank you. So Thank much. you. The WFSA has the advantage of uh, a huge network of colleagues, many of whom are friends, built up over many years. And that network is working to collect the numbers of anaesthetists and anesthesiologists in each of the countries. We don't want just the members of the societies. We want every single physician who's providing anaesthesia, every single non-physician who's providing anaesthesia, so this includes the nurse anaesthetist and the, non, the person who's neither a nurse nor a doctor but is maybe called a clinical uh, anaesthesia specialist or a medical officer. And, and they are really hard to find because often they're in quite remote areas and there's no real record of who they are or how many there are. And now we are really having a big push to absolutely complete the picture. And we now have the information for 90% of the world's population. We're really desperately trying now to get that last 10% because the last 10% is the hardest to get but is probably the most valuable. Well, the safety campaign is to bring safe surgery into countries where unfortunately they don't have it right now they're losing about 17 million people a year. So the idea of the safety campaign is to have organizations like Massimo adopt the country and commit to that country for several years and help it get up to par or close to it what countries like the US or in Europe or Asia like here in Hong Kong do. I really hope that other people on their own will realize this is not only a worthy project to help adopt the country and help it have access
the sur surgical environment. But also by doing it, hopefully they're encouraging others to follow. So that maybe one day there will be a thousand groups like ours doing it. And therefore, this concept of safe surgical environment is not just a dream reaching 0.1% of the population of the 5 billion that are missing it, but all of them.